All right, hello, and welcome back to my grid system in Unity tutorial. Today, we are doing actual making a grid out of the tiles I showed you in the last episode, and also multiple selections so you can have more tiles, or more than one tile selected at any one time. So, quick demo first. So, as you can see, we have more tiles. Got a grid manager object here, which has all the tiles and its co their coordinates just stored in them as children. And if like I can click on these and they turn red when I've got them selected, but if I hold down Control and click and then drag, if I can do this right. Yep. See how there's a black square like that's just showing you what I'm selecting. So say if I do this, then it selects all them. And if I just click there, it goes away again. Again, I do that, selects all them. And yeah, so that's pretty much what I've done today. So I will quickly be showing you, well, not quickly, probably take a while, but whatever. I'll be showing you how I did it. All right, let's go. All right, so first off, I'm gonna explain how the grid of tiles is generated. Cause, uh, okay, so, Last episode, we created a like a tile. If I can find the previous folder, yeah. So, got a tile. We got a tile masterclass, which is basically just has controls for selecting, deselecting, or whatever for the object, for the tile objects. So, we use this in a grid generator, which I wrote. Basically, we have a prefab game object and a vector two of just the x and y of how wide and tall you want the grid to be, and then we have a a grid, a 2D array, sorry, oh shit, uh, of uh, the tile mask class, which we store the uh, generated grid in. So first off, in awake, we just uh, define it. So we set the static reference to be equal to this instance of the grid generator. And we then define the height and width of the 2D array and then call the generate grid in the start method. Now basically this uses uh, two nested loops with basically an X and Y uh, going from zero to whatever you set the grid width and height to. What it does is it'll create a tile at the coordinates of X and Y so all these tiles are assumed to be Oh. Sorry, uh, one in Unity unit, but you could like add a modifier if you wanted uh, bigger tiles or something. I don't know, your call. Uh, basically, we create the, a tile at the coordinates x and y, and just have zero, and then we have the rotation as zero 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 as well using the quaternion dot Euler, and we just store this in most recent tile so we can do some uh, editing with it. Uh, first off, we set the uh, grid coordinates of the tile. We This is a new uh, variable added to uh, the tile master class. So we've got an X and Y coordinate in the grid that it's created. Uh, so we got a getter and setter for that. There you go. And the point of that is basically it's quicker basically just if we can get it the x and y from the script when we're wanting to uh get like tiles in the array say if we were trying to find the neighbors of the tile the tile we had selected we'd just be able to look at all right uh say it was five by five we could look at the width x minus one plus one and the grid y minus one and plus one rather than just going through all the tiles and seeing which was next to it. If that makes sense, sort of. So yeah. Uh, also, we set the uh, transform of the parent object of the tile created to be basically the grid generator object, which is just for keeping it neat. And so it's like a, oh, what's the word? Yeah, it just keeps it neat in hierarchy pretty much. And we set the name to be basically tile and its coordinates just to keep it organized again. And finally, we put this tile in the X and Y coordinate of the uh, grid of tiles to the array that we made at the start. 
And now we have a second method in this that is basically for getting tiles based on a train going past. No, not a train going past. Uh, basically, we give it two vector twos. So basically, we're getting the coordinate two tiles, which it's basically, sorry, basically the selection manager will call this with two tiles. The when you're doing a multiple select, so it'd be the first tile, which will be the start position, and it'll get the X and Y coordinate that's stored as grid X and grid Y. And the final one is the second tile, so that'll define like the square of tiles that you've selected. And it'll then get the X and Ys and see which is lowest and which is highest, which is then used to in like a, a nested for loop again. So basically trying to work out uh, the dimensions and where the grid starts, if that makes sense. So say, oh, I'm trying to think of how to explain this. So even if you like went started in the top right corner of the grid and worked down, right. you'd be able to work out that where the, uh, like the dimensions of the square is pretty much what I'm saying. So yeah, this code just like goes through the array and adds the uh, tiles that are selected to the list or, or not selected, but given by these coordinates that you passed in. And then it returns it as a list. So that could then be assigned to the selected tile list, which I'll get onto. Uh, GUI manager is basically just uh, storage for GUI elements. So they'll be referenced by anything that needs GUI. And uh, so we only have to change it in one place if we want to make changes. And this is just what the semi-transparent semi black box is when we're selecting stuff. And now we'll go on to the... Uh, I've just changed the select methods as well to change the color just to show how selecting works. Uh, so now we've got a few changes to the selection manager. Is that right? Uh, so first off, we've changed the... Uh, instead of just having one game object for the currently selected, we now have a list, which... So we can have as many tiles selected as we want, and the list will change size to accommodate that. Uh, we've also... Uh, revamped... I did two new uh, variables, so the first tile selected and the last tile selected, which is used in the uh, multiple selection, which I'll get onto now. And again, you'll see in the clear selected, this has been added to, uh, they, that just clears it after, so it sets it back to null. And on clear, we also, it just gets all the selected tiles and deselect calls the deselect method when we're like reassigning the selected objects or tiles. So you'll see like, say we want to pass in a new list of tiles that we'd selected to do something on them. And we called true, so we wanted to clear the existing list. So it'd call the clear selected and it would just go through all the selected tiles and call the on deselect method. So in this case, if it were Selected, it'd be red, it'd just reset the color to white. That's it. Uh, so now the multi-select, basically what we do is if the control key is being held down on the keyboard, or left control in this case, uh, and you're clicking, the first click, it'll check if the first tile is null, and if that's true, it'll assume, all right, we're selecting the first tile in the, uh, the first tile to in the like sort of square of what we're selecting. So we'll pass that into uh, the selection raycast method to find one. And that is basically just, I've rewritten a bit of the, uh, it's basically just an overloaded version of the normal raycast method that we use for the single select. It's just that it's set, we pass in uh, game objects by reference, which means, uh, if we do anything to modify object to set uh, that we passed in, the changes will be reflected in whatever we passed in. So say 
we assign whatever the user clicked on here, uh, it would then store that in a first tile selected because we passed that in by reference rather than just as like a new object or whatever. And after that, so so we've selected a tile and we wanted to move on to the second one. That would start drawing the grid. So if we're not pressing the button and the uh, first tile has been selected, so it's not null, then it will select the second tile. It'll say, all right, we're selecting the second tile now. It'll allow us to draw the selection box, which is that black transparent box, which I'll get onto in a minute of explaining how that works. And it'll do the same thing to select the second uh, tile, which it did with the first. So basically that's just uh, uh what's the word? Yeah, it just passes in last tile by reference and gets back the tile when the user clicks, pretty much. And once that has been clicked, it'll say, all right, we're not needing to draw the uh, box anymore because so, we've got both tiles, so that's done. And it'll then start running this code, which since we've got both tiles, it'll get the grid coordinates of the start and end tiles of the two tiles we selected. And it will basically just get the list of tiles that are within the square of what we selected. So I'll just demonstrate that again. So say we have this as the first tile. Um, and we do a grid to here. And this tile where the mouse cursor is will be the second tile. So it uses the X and Y of this tile and the X and Y of this tile to calculate. All right. So we want to go from this Y to this y and this x to this x and it'll get all the uh, tiles that in, are in between or equal to those values all right and once it does that it basically just gets that as a list sets it as a selected and clears anything else that you've selected and resets the first and last tiles to null so in case so like if you wanted to do another multi-select then you wouldn't need to All right, and again, just in case that it wasn't cleared already, we set it again to null, just if we're doing a normal select. And I don't think we use, I use the RB multiple select anymore, so I can get rid of that. Don't need that. And finally, we're going on to the uh, GY. So I will do that in a separate bit because it needs some explaining. So I'll see you in the next section. Okay, so one of the things that came up when trying to do this like selection box that you might not think of uh, when drawing it, because it seems simple, like we just draw a box to the mouse, is because of how Unity draws its boxes. So if we want to call gy.box, we pass in a rect of the start coordinates and the width and height and whatnot, but uh, Unity always draws the boxes from the bottom left. Yeah, from this corner of the box uh, up to the right corner. So that'll be zero, zero, and it'll go for the width and height and then whatever. Which is okay if the mouse cursor, like for what you're selecting, is both higher and further to the right of whatever you're trying to select. But what if we want to do like to the left and up or to the left and down or whatever? So that includes a bit of foot grade to make sure. All right. So so we want to get code to check if, say, the mouse is this side of the, the first object you selected. We want to make sure that the we've got to change where the uh, square to show what we're selecting is drawn from. And I'm just pointing at the screen with the fingers, even though you can't see it. So I'll stop doing that and just get straight onto the code. So basically. Uh, first off, if drawing the multi-select box is true, first off we get a uh, convert the first tile's position to a screen point, which gives us the basically just the X and Y in the monitor. So mine's a 1080 by 1920. So 
are that'll be the dimensions of the screen. And the second one is we use the mouse position again, which is provided as a screen coordinate. Then we take the width and height of the uh, basically we try to work out the width and height uh, height of the box. Sorry, that we want to draw by checking basically getting the difference in x and y values between the uh, two between the two coordinates sets of coordinates. So and we always want it to be positive. So we've got to check which is bigger. And then we just take the smaller from the bigger for both the X and Y, and that's pretty simple. And here's where we get it gets a little bit complicated. It took me a while to figure out, but mainly because I was playing Civ 6 at the same time. But whatever. Uh, so basically, we're checking. All right, so if the X coordinate of the end screen pos position, so that'll be where the mouse cursor is, is more than the X coordinate of the start screen, pos, uh, screen position, which will be the position of the first tile you selected but converted to a uh, converted to a screen coordinate and the same again for the y coordinates or y values sorry so basically we draw the rect uh start screen pause dot x uh we so if the y is more than on the uh, if they're like, sorry, if the mouse cursor is above the tile and to the right of it, then we take, for the height, we take away the M position dot Y, N screen position dot Y from the screen dot height. But if it's not, so if the mouse is below the first object we selected and still to the right, then we take away the first object's position. And it's similar for if like the if we're on the left of the objects with the mouse cursor, we do pretty much the same. But also we change the starting point for where we draw the uh, x axis. So we use the mouse cursor, mouse cursor x to draw it. Uh, yeah. And then finally we just get draw the texture by getting the texture out of the GUI manager we showed earlier. Hopefully that made sense, but if not, here's a little, we can just like get in the code. So basically we're just changing the start coordinates of the square we're drawing based on where the mouse is in relation to the first tile you selected to make sure that it always draws the box correctly and to show what you're selecting. Uh, yeah, so I think that was it. All right. All right. So assembly isn't really required that much. Well, I don't really need to demonstrate it because basically we just added the scripts to the GUI manager to the main camera, and the grid manager is its own separate object. And if we do like say twenty five by twenty five, do that and press play, it'll generate a bigger grid. And even though it's bigger, we can still do the whole uh, loop multiple selects and if we do that, select there, select there, and you can see these are being reflected in the grid or the, like currently selected. So yeah. So cheers for watching. Like, comment, subscribe, all that shit. Uh go download my stuff on HEO. Loud or quiet is still as good as it ever was. Take that as you will. Uh again I put uh what was it? I bought uh, like a little custom key binding things out a couple of days ago. That's on itch.io as well, which I'm surprised Unity doesn't have custom key bindings to an extent, but whatever. Uh, also, the like 2D retro crime game thingy that I put out is now on itch.io. The assets can be downloaded. And the top-down 2D shooter is also out. So all that can be downloaded on my itch.io page. The links will be in the description. Cheers for watching. Bye.